That's a great idea, that 800, the choice. Yeah, so that, that signature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to get 800. Who are you going to give the letter to? Uh, the city attorney, because he's the one that's going to have to make the decision. Garris, who was here before. Oh, well, we definitely can CC the mayor and all the commissioners. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so so, so we'll CC the commissioners, yeah. the mayor and the commissioners, but, but it's going to go to the city attorney who's going to make the decision. Right. Well, the action people, yeah. that's the reason we want to go to the person that's making the decision. So, okay, so. Yeah. Uh, why are you yes. talking about, why are you talking about, um, our, our attorney is, is, um, is, is Martin. Martin Garrett. Yes, sir. Yeah. If you have a pistol or a pen and you want to write, if you want to call them with a complaint or anything like that or, or add anything into that, it's going to be 333 4109. Can you spell it last name, please? Yes, his last name is G E H R E S S. Oh. City Attorney. One S at the end. I think it's one S. One S. One S? Mm -hmm. Okay, this has to be done. This has to be done before October 22nd. Say the last four. 333 4109. Or you can email them at Martin, G H R E S, at DaveOhio.gov. Or anybody that you know who has a complaint or anything, anything they want to add in there. We still need to show up at the year. Is it all right if we uh, use social media to send this out and let people know? I mean, is that okay? Like that. Yes. All right, that's what it's I like. Yes. That's Got good. Like. Got good. Yep. Yeah. Take a picture of it and send it out. Okay. This Say Wayne. Northern Hills, 700 residents, mm -hmm. opposes. And, and, and I can tell you the day you didn't end up like to be opposed uh, this as well. I, in fact, I've talked to uh, you know one of our VPs today. And, and he said that uh, Derek, we ought to go on record as the NAACP opposing the liquor separately as well. So, and, and, so. Also, and also the city commission opposes also, and also um, Dayton Police opposes it, and also okay. the Sheriff Department opposes it also. And when we talk about those 800 households, we're probably talking about an excess of 15 uh, 2,000 residents. That's true. Those yeah. are houses. That's yeah. households. Right. 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 We have to, we have to okay. get all into the church. All right. So we're at the end of our agenda. Okay. <laughs> you know, we've got to keep it moving. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I always have something. I guess I'm a hell man. All these people have to deal with. It. You know what we do this this year, right? How many of us received this? Did you read? <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's the thing. This year we wait to the curb. We don't bag anymore. I just wanted, well, that's what, uh, that's what uh, we're saying here. You rake them to the curb, yes. and it gives you the pickup dates. The dates are in there? The dates are in here. Let's just hope the leaves actually fall. Before yeah, the exactly. pickup yeah, tank. That's the last they, fall. they haven't fallen yet. Those, those leaves will fall. Now, here's the thing. Let's get the pickup date and don't be like I was one year. Mr. Stafford, oh. we're zone two. What is zone two? We're zone two. What is zone two? We're zone two. We're zone two. Yeah, we're zone two. We're zone two, yeah, and they said they're going to put those signs up saying, we're coming I, to your neighborhood. Wait a minute, they've already uh, sent out a pamphlet yeah. telling you. The yeah, they, you they have. When did they go? Yeah. I don't remember them. I got it pinned on my, my board. Yeah. It's not it's that long, is it? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's it's so. <laughs> I have one more thing. Yeah. I have one more thing. We need more of those. Uh, and, uh, and I'm sorry to take this, but this is our business of our homes. Most of us have 
ninety, a hundred thousand dollars invested in where we live. And I don't want anybody to devalue mine because when I get ready to sell it, I want my money. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. And if you're not willing to fight for your eighty and ninety, a hundred thousand dollars, sorry about that. I'm going to give you hell. Tell them what it is. Mr. What is it? Okay. <laughs> now, now, if your neighbor, listen, we've been over this one. I'm reiterating something. We've been over this one and established. If your neighbor is not taking care of what needs to be taken care of, here's a postcard the city is furnished to all of us, and they did it through the Neighborhood Association. We, any one of us, can come to the neighborhood with the problem that they have somebody not cutting their grass, somebody not doing such and such a thing, and it will say, occupant, at 2708 English, occupant. Yard, trash, debris, improperly licensed park cars, or overgrown grass weeds, broken windows and doors, visible roof damage, gutters and others, the peeling paint, all of these things. You can send them a, a merry little notice. This is it. If they call in the Northern Hills Neighborhood Association, we tell them, say, call the city and such and such thing and tell them on yourself. Uh, no, this is, we take, remember, we worked this one out uh, here in the, in, uh, because we wanted to monitor who is doing what in the neighborhood so that you will know what I'm doing, that person will know what they're doing, and all of us, this is all of our jobs, and we are making it here at Northern Hill. There has been, we worked this out. So we won't reinvent the wheel, we'll just help you with it. And <coughs> saw it and round it as we have a need to do. Because all of us see something, say something. With that, I'm sorry to take up so much of your time. No worries, no worries. But I do think, Mr. Savage, yes. is that we can get some more of these. We don't necessarily have to uh, be um, micromanaging them, right? But if, let's say that she sees something at her house tomorrow, or at a neighbor's house tomorrow, she don't want to wait until next month. No, she should write it down. Right, 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 right. But if she yeah, had one of them, we need to have them. If she had one of them, then she would be able to just put it in the mailbox herself, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much more? Or or just, where, where, where do we get those? Do we pay for those or do we get those from the house? Can we get some? No. Uh, so you going to uh, pass them out? Uh, uh, you going to pass them out? Because it does uh, no good. Vernetta. Yeah. So are you going to pass them out? Vernetta gave these to oh. Northern Hill. Can you see if she can well, actually print some more? Hill. So where can we get them? <laughs> oh, oh, no, so oh. you're out. still part of Northern Hill. Yes, we are. But and uh, and uh, here. Any way we can help one another, Lord knows. I'm not being I'm not being stingy or anything. You just don't want to pass on. But the thing is, if I see something tomorrow, I really don't. If I see something tomorrow, I'm not going to wait till next month to call you or Valletta or whoever. No, no. The second Monday in every month. Okay, all right. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. No, we need no. to get some. I don't care. Yes, if you need a card, if you need a card for something okay. that you need to uh, mail one for, we, just call 278 9091 and ask for a card. That's 278 9091, ask for a card. <laughs> 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 
9091. Yeah, we, uh, he got them from Valletta. Oh, okay. And I'm sure you want to get them from her because it's stamped from the city. It's not coming from you. That's right. You don't even, you can just take it and stick it in somebody's box if you're bold enough. Or you can just mail it. That's the end of that. Use it as a, uh, uh, to the occupant. Here you are uh, use, uh, speaking uh, in common. Yeah, nobody will know who you are. So you can have, you know, I don't see any reason for you to just have a stack of them in your house. You're not going to have people not cutting the grass every week. So just call and get one, and then we can ask her for more so she can get them right so they won't know that they're sure. coming from you. With that, thank you for your... To that point, I like to offer up, if you have a smartphone and you haven't downloaded it yet, download the Name Deliver app, and start the same function, so you can literally take a picture and send a request to the city. Um, so it's the same function as that postcard. Oh, what's the call again? Oh, Dayton Delivers. Dayton Delivers. Yes. 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 Oh, Dayton Delivers. Great, great. Okay. okay. All right. Well, okay. You can see the power in a, in a group. All right. So, so, uh, so, so we went through our agenda. So I just want to. So our agenda is complete. Okay. So I, but I do want to take this opportunity because I do know that Jared is from the city of Dayton. Uh, so I, I know. That, so you're a resident of Northern Hills. Yeah, I'm a resident of Northern Hills. Uh, so, so, so you just came for the meeting. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, all right. All right. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. You know, and then. Uh, and then, secondly, I see there's two candidates in here uh, that's, that's seeking office of city commission. Uh, so, uh, so I do want to, you know, since they did take time out of their schedule uh, to come in, you know, to come to the meeting, I do want to allow each one of them uh, five minutes apiece to give us their platform, uh, you know, for for why they're seeking the office of Dayton City Commission. Uh, you know, I didn't realize they were coming here uh, today, but uh, hey. When you're seeking public office, you gotta just show up. You know? So, uh, uh, so, so that uh, uh, I'll go with uh, uh, David is running first since he came first, and then we go to Shanice Turner. Thank you so much, Derek, and thank you all of you for coming to your neighborhood meetings because this is where the difference is made. I know that because my neighborhood. I started going to neighborhood meetings soon after I moved in. It had to sort of do it because first thing happened when I bought my house for $14,500, city harassed me. And I didn't know who to turn to. So, I gotta tell you, my neighborhood where I bought a house for $14,500, that house is now worth at least 10 times that. My office building that I bought for $2,200 is now worth about 25 times that, maybe more, uh, 100 times, I don't know, it's $100,000 or so. And the cottages I bought, fixed them up. My whole neighborhood, when we have a house that burns, it doesn't get torn down. It gets fixed up. We have a house right behind my office that sold in foreclosure, first for 11000 then again two years later for 25000 It went on the market at a hundred at $209,000, and it had three offers that day. So, what did we do in South Park that made a difference? And we came together as a neighborhood, and we decided it wasn't about selling the old homes, it was about selling the community. Because people want to live with people that they feel good about, that they feel safe around, that they feel comfortable with. And that is what's missing in our community. In the time since I moved into this city, our police department has dropped from over 500 sworn officers to down to about 300. But you know what's grown? Private police forces. Rich people have at Miami Valley Hospital, at the University of Dayton, at Sinclair, at Metro Parks, at Grandview, they all have their private police departments. This shouldn't be legal. Since when do only rich people have police? They have the full arrest powers that a Dayton police officer does, but they don't have the accountability that a Dayton police officer does. If you remember two years ago, Cincinnati police officers 
shot a man on a traffic stop. His name was Samuel DeBose. That should have been the end of these private police forces. That's one of the most important reasons I am running for city commission. Because I believe that when you have police in your community that know the community, that are responsive to the community, you feel safer and your neighborhood can start to flourish and build. My neighborhood got lucky because the hospital paid for two Dayton police officers for almost 20 years because they wanted to protect their stuff until they realized they could have their own private police force. They didn't have to hire Dayton cops anymore. The other thing I'm running on, and this is not, people say, oh, you can't do anything about it. That's the county. I will not let my people, residents of the city of Dayton, go to that jail until it's safe. Because that county jail is giving death sentences to people for minor misdemeanors. There is no excuse for that, people. We used to have our jail. We closed it down. We turned it over to the county. They've spent over $13 million in settlement so far this year. That has to stop. So one other thing that happens in this community, and it, it doesn't work for Dayton. It might work for the suburbs, but it doesn't work for Dayton, is they play games about valuing properties. Now the sad thing is you can still buy a house in Dayton for $20,000. You just better bring cash because the bank won't loan to you on anything under 50000 Yet every three years, they're sitting there adjusting your property values, your tax value. Excuse me? I buy something. It's mine until I sell it at the price I bought it for. Don't start playing these games saying, well, because he fixed up his house next door, my house is worth more. Or because his house went into foreclosure and the scrappers got in and tore everything out and the house isn't worth anything, my property value should go up or down. It is institutionalized racism at its worst. And we have to stop this, because our community can't afford these games to be played. When the banks sit there and say, well, we won't lend you the money, and you can't value it at anything. I've got a friend whose father built a house in 1963 in this city for 19.5. You know what it's worth today? 19.5, and he's taking care of it all those years. It is despicable. And that's my five minutes, because I actually ran my time. But uh, <laughs> I'm good about that. Denise goes over a lot. But if you want to, if you want to have change in this community, you need to vote for the two of us, and there will be us plus Daryl Fairchild. And that will be the first time you will have three independent voices on that commission that think for themselves and aren't working for the people with the money. And trust me, big money has bought this community for a long time. You don't see any $5,000 donations to either of our campaigns coming from somebody who owns a landfill. You don't see anybody comp big donations from the hospital or the people at UD. That's what's been owning this city for a long time, and it has to stop. So please, November 5th. Make a change. And let's get honest about downtown. Because when they said the culture of corruption, and they only named four black men, and I said, come on, you've got to be kidding me. That's all you can indict is four black men? Where, you, you're telling me that all this corruption was, where's the rest of them? Where's the rest of them? The FBI and the DOJ didn't do their job. You can do your job. It's time. Matt and Chris say, oh, there is no culture of corruption. Trust me, when the city manager is getting her husband a job at the school board and hiring his, one of his employees that she then had to fire because apparently the person's a racist, and she hired her at the HRC, there's a problem. What I'm did a, you call that institutionalized what, I'm sorry? Institutionalized racism. And it's been going on for longer than I've been alive in this community. The divide is very real. So. Thank you very much for the time, thank and thank you for coming to your neighborhood meeting because this is where it happens. Good evening, everyone. So I will not stand in your way. I know it is getting late and you're ready to go home. So uh, just real briefly, I know, I know, I am older uh, than I look. I am old enough to run. People ask me, are you even old enough to run for any office? Yes, I am. Um, I actually, some of you I know in this room, I started with uh, the city of Dayton uh, with the Northwest Priority Board. Uh, came up where I met Mr. Dr. Ford and 
um, a number of people in the room. Um, I started as a community service advisor with the city of Dayton. And I tell people that the truth of it all is that's the reason why they don't want me to run the powers of be, is because I know where all the skeletons and the bodies are kept. I really truly understand the inner workings of government. I work at Wright Patterson Air Force Base. I'm a logistician, and I am running for Dayton City Commission. I ran in 2017, fell short by 1,700 votes. 2018, I served as Commissioner Dural Fairchild's campaign manager. We're back at it again. Um, this year, we're energized, we're mobilized, and we're calling on people to be intentional. We have to see changes in our community. Um, you heard it from David. He mentioned his, he bought his property for fourteen five. My husband and I, we bought our property for $10,000 in Southern Dayton View, and I'll tell you where we are. We put a, a new roof, mechanics, everything you can think of. Guess how much our property rang at? $10,000. $25,000. Location, location. Location, location. And those right? houses are nice. And we live Dayton. in the historic area the, um, down in, again, Southern Dayton View, Lexington, Oxford, Bryn Mawr, but we can't find value. And here's the other caveat to all of that, right? You put all this investment in your property, and then you have the insurance companies that come down and they don't want, they want to come into your property. They want to assess every little thing to even see if you are in fact insurable, but then they're looking at everything around you as well and you're not getting the value. So we have to change that. And so again, we're asking people to be intentional. So three things that I'm, I would do as your next city commissioner, that is we have to have clear processes. These cards, come on now. Why do you have to send a card in to identify whether your neighbor or whomever else is not taking care of their line, that's the purpose of city services. Yes, ma'am. That is why we yes, live in this community. What happened to housing inspectors, right? Yeah. We have 65 um, neighborhoods in the city of Dayton. We're down to seven housing inspectors. Oh my we have to start making sure that not only our residents, our city staff, they are a priority. We've gotten away from that. Our city staff, they deserve the tools and the resources that they need so they can, in fact, service our neighborhood and service the residents. Again, we cannot keep voting the same people in thinking we're going to get different results. They've had their time. They had their time. This is a job, whether it's part-time or full-time. You have to have the passion for one, because this is definitely a job, and it is a calling, and you have to know the inner workings of government so that you're able to do the job. Again, I come with the experience and the passion. I hope you can hear that in my voice, right? <laughs> but I come with the passion because I truly care about this community and the things and what we're doing right now, it's not working for us. We really have to make sure that we are closing that gap that we have in the city of Dayton. And it calls for people to be intentional and start vetting these candidates. Not because somebody got a legacy, or because they daddy, or they granddaddy, or because they was friends, or because of whomever. Oh, I know such and such. We used to play ball. He was my teacher, my principal. No. What are your credentials? How are you vetted? How are you able to perform the job? How are you able to govern for my best interest? How are you going to make sure that when I come time to sell my property, I'm going to get that $100,000 or that $90,000? It's not working for us. So I need your help to do it. I need you to make phone calls. I need you to properly vet me as a candidate. There are write-ups in the voter league. Uh, thank you, as well as Dave Bellamy uh, Voters League write-up. And then you also have you can view my website, which is on that card there, Facebook. Talk it over with your friends, your family members. We need people to turn out and vote. Politics are local. We are excited about 2020. We're going to get them out of office, right? Yes. <laughs> but the decisions start here at the local level. They don't have nothing to do with what goes on Gettysburg, or Salem Avenue, or that BMW down the street, right? <laughs> I tell you one thing, my family hang out down there. So yeah, leave them alone. <laughs> <laughs> leave them alone. <laughs> but seriously, I need everyone to be intentional. And I need your help to do it. So if you will allow me to put a yard sign in your yard, if you're willing to make phone calls, if you're willing to do whatever, if you're willing to give a dollar, I take that too. But seriously, I really appreciate your time, your consideration. Uh, we really got to make some changes. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, so, so I just want to kind of conclude with this. Uh, you know, like when I was giving my report a little while ago, uh, my president.
what I'm talking about. And I was, uh, that's why I moved over here. Uh, and I was giving my presence report.